That's some good stuff, ladies. Enjoy. Stive Tribe. How are y'all today? So today we're just kind of giving y'all a little lifestyle day in the life I guess you could say but just kind of an in general let's check in on a couple things. So the first things first, first thing we always got to do in the morning. Feed the petting zoo. That's some good stuff ladies. Enjoy. Some people ask us, uh, gotta give a little bit for mama duck right here. So she ain't got to walk too much. A lot of people ask us uh, what kind of feed we use uh, since we have ducks and goats and whew, Elsa. Uh, ducks and goats and chickens and guineas and everything in here. So one thing about it is goats can't eat chicken feed. It'll make them sick, could eventually kill them. However, chickens and ducks can eat goat feed. Uh, because it's mainly just a big protein source um, is that you're really kind of getting for the goats. So what we use is I use an 18% uh, pellet, protein pellet for the goats, and then also uh, alfalfa pellets, which chickens aren't the biggest fans of. Nobody really is, but they need it in their diet. Um, if you got a low shortage of hay or whatever it is, you want to make sure you have that in there. Uh, but everybody likes it. That's a, a feed source that you can use to feed everything, to kind of have a petting zoo like this. Isn't that right, Elsa? Girl, I done fed you, I ain't got nothing else in there. She sees me holding this. Don't eat. You gonna miss it. All these other animals, it's kinda <laughs> fighting of the strongest around here to make sure you can get some food. But like I said, mama down here, I throw her a little on the ground so she doesn't have to fight the buckets and get into everything. Now it's time to feed the boys. So we get all of our feed from a local roller mill here, roller mill that's here locally. Uh, they're awesome people. It's been around for since the 1800s. It's a great place. Um, if you don't have one of those, you, you know, it, I would suggest trying to find one close to your area. You're just going to get better. Like this place is all non-GMO. Uh, you're going to get better non-GMO feed, and it's going to be cheaper than say if you're going to Roll King or Tractor Supply and buying all your feed from there. They just, they get crazy expensive. And like at Roll King, it's like a sweet mix. That's like the only thing they offer for goats. And that's nice as it for a treat here and there, but it's not good for a primary diet. Uh, so I would, uh, if you're looking into getting animals, I would really suggest trying to make you uh, find you a roller mill or something like that on lunch. What's up boys? See their pen? Man, they really cleaned it out quick. Um, that's my goal is uh, we're actually headed to Georgia. Um, there you go, fellas. We're actually headed to Georgia this weekend to see some family. Um, so my goal is to get them on over to the next side so they can start clearing that out and have them some nice greenery. Um, my mom and Grammy Karen are all taking care of them. They, they know how to take care of the animals, so I don't have any concern there. But I would like to go ahead and get them because I ain't gonna be able to do it this weekend. And then who knows what next week will bring. So hopefully I will be able to get them uh, moved over maybe today. So if I do, I'll, we'll have that video for tomorrow, but um, I'll show you how easy it is to move out electrical fencing. The only thing I'm trying to figure out is really Charlie. He's probably just gonna have to be tied up to a tree and eat some brushery before, uh, while I move it. 
because Buster can go in with the girls because he's a weather. Uh, he'll just play and enjoy and have fun. Um, but Charlie can't because he's our buck and I don't want him to have any accidents before we're ready because all of our goats are still a little on the young side. Um, and then we do have two fenced in yards that are permanent, but one's got our garden in it. And I have a feeling Charlie will not focus on the grass and he'll focus on the garden. And we don't want him eating all of those plants. Uh, and then in the front, we have four dogs that he's never been introduced to. Um, and with a buck and with four dogs, one being Rusty, who is a huge dog, um, all of our uh, males have been neutered. The only dog that we have that isn't is our Great Pyrenees, just because she's purebred and she's too nice to not possibly breed at some point. Um, so I don't want to risk putting them in any fence, causing any fights with other animals or eating our garden. So I'll probably just tie him to a tree because it'll really take be a quick job just to move him around. And he probably won't really bother him too much anyways because he'll be eating a lot of nice greenery. So that's stuff to come. Um, but that is how quick it is to feed these animals. Once you have a routine, it takes five minutes to do. But it's a beautiful day here in uh, Kentucky. Y'all see my breath? Fall's coming, folks. Y'all belly's full. Charlie, or uh, T-Bird looks like he's caught, getting it ready. Let us hear it, T-Bird. He's just staring at me. Hey, is that a boy? Update on him, he's uh, he's great now. I think he just had a bad day. Jim mentioned it on our live last night. Uh, he hasn't tried to attack or flog anyone anymore. Um, I think maybe Jen just caught him off guard. Uh, because he's, uh, he's being a good boy now. And y'all, I hope y'all can see these blunt face wine dots. They are the prettiest chicken. I love that. A little salt and pepper. Party chickens. Lay that egg, Becky. Check that shout out, y'all. Y'all see the steam coming off the tree? With the morning sun coming over the treetops. That's a beautiful sight right there. What a pretty morning. All right, had to get cleaned up a little bit. Never do your chores, or never take a shower then do your chores. If you got goats like ours, they get you so dirty, and you're like, why did I even take a shower? So, all that stuff's done. Jen and the kids are inside. We're getting ready to go check on them, but we are actually harvesting some veggies uh, for a quiche that Jen's making, which is really cool. I love some quiche, it's so good. But I gotta go check on these seedlings in this hot, hot greenhouse. So, uh, you know what? Actually, let's take a quick break. I wanna show you all the twinkle lights at night because we finally got a shot of it. So here it is. Pretty in it. Gosh, they're so pretty. But back into the greenhouse. Let's check out these seed leaves and see how they're doing. So this was our first two trays that we did. Um, we've got all kinds of beets that are coming up and picking out. Um, we've got some pole beans that are coming up. If you see closely, we this is some little gem uh, lettuce. We've got some butterhead lettuce coming in, and then over here. Let that airplane go by our helicopter, goodness gracious. Uh, over here we got some Russian red kale and then some radishes. So these two trays we did and then we got to the, the heat, heat of the summer it felt like. It was like 900 degree temp. So we're not seeing great germination right off that on some of the stuff like the cabbage. But then we come over here and we've got, this was our second one we did once it got a little bit cooler. And we've got all kinds of things growing. So this is uh, the kohlrabi. This right here is our flame star cauliflower and then our graffiti cauliflower. So that's a, like a, almost an orange cauliflower and this one's purple, so that's really cool. Um, we don't have anything in these just yet. Um, I'm probably gonna plant some more cabbage in there. Then we got some more beets that are popping up. 
Um, this is Starfighter Lettuce. This one is uh, Cabbage Teep Nore, I think it's how you pronounce it. Basically, it's a purple cabbage. That's from Baker's Creek. It's very pretty. Um, some more Starfighter. This is more Butterhead. And then we got all kinds of Red Russian Kale and Scarlet Kale that are deciding to come up. And then more Rattlesnake Pole Beans. So we got all kinds of stuff happening up in here in this greenhouse. I love being in this greenhouse. I love everything about it. It's so nice. And I love seeing the stuff coming up. All right, so let's harvest a couple things for Jen's quiche because we got, well, it's going to be more than just what's going in the quiche because we just need to harvest in general. So let's get at it. First I was the pepper bed, not a bad haul. Now it's time to get some of this okra off. So my bad, I showed y'all the peppers and I kind of went rogue because I just realized how many, how much stuff we actually needed to harvest. So this is what I'm taking into Jen. There is a bunch of tomatoes, a bunch of white cucumbers, regular cucumbers, peppers, jalapenos, pretty much everything that's in our garden is in this basket. So. Let's go take our stuff to her and see how this quiche is going. Okay, here we go. It's probably gonna get dark. Might stop and restart it. Ah, uh, can you see me? Maybe. Here we come back. There she is. Look, babe. Oh, wow. What do you think? All kinds of stuff. <laughs> you can see more tomatoes. My stepdad just brought over two more bags of tomatoes. So, on top fine. of ours. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So, what you got going on in there? It doesn't let up. It doesn't let up. <laughs> you shut that door. All right. We're not going outside. Nope. <laughs> I'm making a quiche. Yeah, I'm buddy. actually, early this morning, I put a roast in the crock pot with some taters and carrots and all kinds of stuff. So, that's for dinner, but I wanted to make a quiche to tide us over for brunch type things that would tide us over for dinner. So, first time I ever had quiche was at Jess's, Jess and Maya's house, Roots and Refuge. When we went to get our goats, I think it was, we stayed with them, and she made two quiches that were absolutely delicious. Um, she told me how to do it, and I have loved the art of making quiche ever since. We do it with all kinds of stuff, but um, I sauteed some zucchini and onions. Both were from our garden. So I've got a cast iron, which is, how big around do you think that is? I think it's a 12 incher. 12 incher. I've got a pie crust in here. It's a store-bought pie crust. I didn't make it. It ripped a little. Yeah, it okay. was ripped a little. So I'm gonna put all this quiche in here. Also, my oven is preheating to 375. So I'm gonna get all this in here. That's the quiche. So we just having a veggie one today? Yep, veggie quiche. Well, I'm actually gonna throw some ham in it. Ah, nice. One thing that we really like too is if you have like say some leftover boneless pork chops, yeah. add them bad boys up and throw them in there. That's a really good meat to add. Those are good. So we've got some deli ham that really just needs to be used and I wanted to add a little meat. So I'm gonna tear all that up, probably just two or three slices, tear up some of that, just some little chunks and throw those in there. I had a um, pretty calm morning around here. That's good. Not as busy as the canning days. It's about to be though, I gotta move these bell goats. Yeah. That's we uh, gave all the kids a bath, got ourselves cleaned up. I don't know if he told you, but we went out and we trimmed the goat's hooves. Oh yeah, I don't think I did tell you all that. It was time for them to get everything trimmed. It's been pretty wet, so um, their hooves have grown quite a bit. So we trimmed them, which was an event. That's the girls it. did great, but Charlie was a mess. Thankfully, I did it before I cleaned myself up because he had me stinking. That's what I was telling. We get the chores done before we take our showers. Yeah, showers. you know that that buck? They put off that musky smell when they pee on themselves, and I just I could smell it all over myself, and it was disgusting. Well, she had to hold his head while I yeah. got the hooves. Uh, I know a, a milking station would be perfect for that situation. We don't have it built yet because we haven't really had the need of milking, yeah. so we just straddle, and the girls are. 
and Buster are good. We don't really need any help with that one, but she had to hold uh, his horns while I was getting because he wanted to put it up my backside. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, so now over here. My bad. <laughs> now over here, I've got six eggs and three fourths cup of milk. You can use milk or cream, like a heavy cream. Um, I had milk on hand, so that's what I used. And you pour this over top. But like I said, this doesn't have to be zucchini and ham or onions. It can be anything that you want it to be. Yeah, any look. vegetable, any meat. Um, you can use deer meat. You can use yeah. cow meat. You can use chicken. If you don't like meat, you don't even have to do meat. Yeah, really the only, the only two main components to make it a quiche is the pie crust and the egg, yeah. right? Egg and milk. But then the components are anything. And the cheese. Oh yeah. So I like feta cheese. So you don't want to use too much feta if you do do feta because it's, you know, potent as it is. So just a little bit of that. It just gives it a little bit of a better flavor. And then I've also got some shredded cheddar cheese that I'm going to sprinkle over top. There's no measuring to this. It's however much you want. Um, there's not a specific amount. Just whatever you like. We like a lot of cheese. <laughs> so I'm going to put quite a bit in here. And that's it. You put the top on. Like I said, my oven is preheated to 375. And we're going to put this in the oven for about 45, 50 minutes. And when that's done, it's going to make a really good brunch, brunch, breakfast. You can even do it for dinner, whatever you want. But it's going to be yummy. Hey y'all, so I hope you kind of enjoy this kind of chill morning yep, uh, that we've had. Morning with the Stivers. That's right. Uh, we like to do that every once in a while because our mornings keep changing. Yep. So <laughs> we like to just kind of bring y'all along and kind of chit chat with you and keep us company while we do so. Um, the quiche is going to be delicious. We'll post a picture of it on our Facebook page because yep. we're not going to make y'all wait that 50 minutes uh, mm -hmm. for it to pop out because we're going to dive right into it. But follow us on Facebook on the Stivers Homestead page and we'll post it on there for that finished product. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, I enjoyed the time with you all today. I hope you all have as well. Yeah, I think so. I hope you enjoyed the quiche recipe. Yep. Let me know if you make your own. Hey, right, yeah. Until the next one. We'll see you. Bye.